Hey, this is Presh Talwalker. Here's a fun game you can play with another person. The game starts on January 1. You and the other person take turns naming dates. But there's a restriction. The date you call out must be later in the year and have either the same month value or the same day value as the previous date that was called out. So for example, the game starts on January 1. The first player can either name a date that's later in January, or the first player can name one of the future months but have the same day value as 1. Now whichever date the first player calls out, the second player has to abide by the same restriction of calling out dates. You and the other player keep calling out dates, and the player to call out December 31 wins the game. I'm going to tell you that one of the players can always win this game. The question is, which player is it and what is the winning strategy? As a bonus, does it matter if this game is played in a leap year? Give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching the video for the solution. So there is a simple procedure that the first player can always guarantee a win. The first player should call out dates that are in the following list written in the format month slash day. These are a list of 12 dates. They can be remembered because the day value is equal to the month value plus 19. So the first player can always call out one of these dates and continue to call out another date in this list until the first player gets to the winning date of December 31. So let's see how this plays out. The game starts on January 1. The first player thinks about which date could the first player call out, and clearly there's another day in this list which works. So that's January 20th. So the first player says, I'm going to call out January 20th. Now the second player can either call out another later day in January, or can call out another month with the day value of 20. So let's suppose the second player calls out another day in January and calls out January 28th. So the first player thinks, all right, how can I get to the next winning date? Scanning this list, you can see that you can call out another month with the day value of 28, and that would be September 28th. So the first player calls out 928, and now the second player has to either choose a day that's later in September, or goes ahead and calls a future month with the same day value. So let's say the second player calls out another month and says November 28th. So the first player says, all right, from November 28th, I can call out the next winning date, which is November 30th. Now you can see the second player is stuck. From November 30th, there is no later date in November, so the second player has to call out something in December, and that would be December 30th. And that leaves the first player the winning date of December 31. So this is an example of how the first player can win the game. Now there are different ways that the game can be played, but it will always end with the first player being able to call out December 31. So as long as you start out by naming January 20th and then continuing to name one of the dates in this list, you will always be able to win this game. So this is a strategy for how the game can be won but the question is, how were we able to derive this? You want to be able to think backwards. So by rule, December 31 is a winning date. So logically, this means if you name out any other day that's in December, that's going to be a losing date. Because if you name out another day that's in December, that gives your opponent the chance to name out December 31. So you don't want to be calling out a losing date. So what's the next date which is not losing? Well, you jump back to November and you think about November 30th. This turns out to be a winning date 
because it forces the next player to play to have to play the losing date of December 30th. There's just no other choice for what this other player can do. So we can deduce that November 30th is a winning date. Now by similar logic, all of the other days that are earlier in the month of November have to be losing. If you called out November 5th, that would give your opponent the chance to call out November 30th. So you don't want to do that. Those are all losing dates. And even thinking back once one more month, this would also mean that uh, October 30th is also a losing date. Because if you name out October 30th, your opponent will then name out November 30th, and that'll put you in a losing position. But what about one day before that? Well, we can deduce that October 29th is therefore a winning date. This forces, the if you can name this date, the next player will be forced to play one of the losing dates. Any of the later dates in October will be losing, and any of the November 29th or December 29th are also losing dates. So we can say October 29th is a winning date. And we see a pattern here. To get the next winning date, we want to go one month back and one day back. So we subtract one from the month value and the day value, and we can keep generating the other winning dates. And we keep doing that all the way until the beginning of January, and that'll get us to January 20th is the first winning date. And this is the pattern of the day is equal to month plus 19, because it's true for December 31, and each time we're decreasing the day and the month value by one. So these are the list of winning dates, and it doesn't matter if it's a leap year or not, because you can always name out these dates whether you have an extra day in February or not. Did you figure out this problem? Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math and game theory. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, which you can follow on Facebook, Google Plus, and Patreon. You can catch me on social media at Prashawalker. And if you like this video, please check out my books. There are links in the video description.